Queensland in Gilfell and with Pepper and Pine Garden Design. And today I'm updating you on the Three Sisters Garden and the garden next to it where I'll be planting more corn and squash. In this video, I'm just gonna be talking to you about how the garden's going and my plan for this next section of this back garden, as well as what I'm gonna be doing to create a cut sunflower garden. So I started a series this season with starting corn I'm from seed inside the house instead of starting it directly in the ground like I've done in the past. And so far I've had awesome success by starting all my corn seed inside. Not only did I get a month, if not more growth on these plants, they look awesome. They really do. They look really good. I'll get you a close up here in a second. So I got an extra month's growth. They're really healthy. I was able to control germination a lot better and get pretty much all my plants that I had planted in the garden. And now I've got my uh, winter squash plants planted and they're looking really great. I started all of these from seed in the house as well. And they're super healthy. I've had clearly good germination because I was able to germinate them inside the house and then put them exactly right where I want in the ground. And while oftentimes squash and melons and even corn are suggested to not be sown indoors because they don't like the transplant, these have transplanted fine and seem to be growing really quickly. We just put these in the ground last week and they've already doubled in size. And that's with two cold spells hap that happened this past week. So I'm really, really, really happy with how all these plants that I've started from seed indoors have done. Now let's talk about what I'm gonna be planting out here with these guys. So first, let me show you the growth that's happened here. These are my uh, Butterkin Ultra Butternut. Let me switch that around. Ultra Butternut Squash, my Butterkin Squash, and my Getty, uh, I can never say the last part, I'll put it in the description, uh, another a Native American uh, winter squash plant that I'm trying for the first time here. But look how beautiful these plants look. Again, that I started inside and three weeks after starting them inside, put them in the garden. So they didn't have to be in my house very long and they're already looking really healthy. Having these yellow leaves here, this is not surprising. This is what happens with squash plants. You just pick them off so the slugs don't get to them and it encourages growth. Anytime I have a yellow leaf like this, I'll just pick it off, put it in the compost pile. Don't leave it here because it'll encourage slugs to come and eat on them. You don't want that. So any dead foliage you have, you want to give to your chickens or your compost or whatever you do with your dead leaves. So look at this corn, it's looking awesome. It's probably about six inches high at this point. Um, everything looks really healthy. And had I started these from seed, they'd probably be about half as tall, if not less than half as tall. So I'm really glad to see the growth that I've got on these guys. And now because they're this tall, I can come in here and plant my bean plants. If you plant your bean plants too early before the corn starts getting height, then the beans won't have anything to grow on. So you wanna make sure that your corn is at least six to eight, if not more, inches tall so that the beans have something to start growing on. I did a whole video on this, which you can see here on my three sisters garden and planting this from seed and why I arranged it in this way. But basically I spaced out the squash plants five feet apart in all directions. And then in between there put the corn and now the bean plants, which I'm hoping to plant out today or tomorrow. All right, and these are my Kentucky pole beans that I'm going to be planting around the corn. They're pretty tall and they grow fast. So we'll see, we'll see if the corn's tall enough. Um, I might have to come out here and give these some support, some like bamboo poles or some sort of stake until the corn gets tall enough. But again, this is all an experiment, so I'm okay with that. But I'm gonna go ahead and get these in the ground, uh, maybe get the watermelon in the ground and we're gonna call it a day. Okay, so just to be clear where I'm gonna be planting these bean plants in this arrangement, I've got my four corn plants spaced out in a six inch square. And I'm just going to plop the bean plant right between them. I might go on the outside just a hair, but for the most part, it's just going right inside that square. So these bean plants are about as tall as these corn plants, maybe a smidge shorter. So we'll see if they're able to grow together. Now and I'm debating what my next move is gonna be here. <laughs> I originally thought, well, you know what? I'm gonna plant some more popcorn because I didn't get as much as I 
in my head thought I was going to have. This is 48 plants. I really need more than 48 plants to grow the amount of popcorn that we could use as a family. So what I think I'm gonna do, just to keep with this whole experiment realm that I'm in with popcorn, I think I'm actually gonna direct plant some popcorn seed here around these plants and see how they do in comparison, since now is the time that you would plant that seed, or this, this week or maybe a week earlier, you could have done okay with, as long as those leaves didn't come up before that cool spell we got last a couple days ago. I think I'm gonna plant the corn in between all these plants in groups of four to see how they do. Now, the other thing I'm planting out today is my second round of sunflowers. Uh, I have another round of sunflowers I planted as a border, a back border in my other garden, and those have been in there for a couple weeks now. And I started these about two, almost three weeks ago. So I wanna start planting and starting sunflower seeds every week from here on out to grow down this row here so that every week when they start to harvest, I'll have sunflowers for my house or friends' houses or even to sell. And it's basically experimenting and planning for next year when we do hope to have our market, uh, our booth at the farmer's market. So I really am warming up for that <laughs> this year. So I've had this tarp covering this garden for several weeks now and you can see how well it's done. You can see where this grass and weeds have really started to die off and yellow. I am having to come in here and pull these things out, but the majority of the work has been done by the tarps. And so I might need to come in here with a shovel and just kind of dig some of this stuff up. But for the most part, <clears throat> the tarp has done the work and I can really just plant directly into this now with my sunflowers. If I'm gonna plant sunflowers for a cut garden, the closer I space them, the smaller the heads will be. And most people are thinking, well, don't you want big sunflower heads? But actually the size head that you want for a really nice bouquet is a lot smaller than you would imagine. So spacing these plants out about six inches apart would actually be ideal for the size head that I want. So I have about 40, 30, 40 plants here. I haven't done the count. So I just need to measure and see about how many I'm gonna get and that'll help me decide um, how many rows I'll be doing. I may only get one row out of the row, maybe one and a half, um, but that's gonna help me plan how many sunflowers I need to be planting and starting inside every week to really build this flower garden up as the season goes. And then my other plan is to grow watermelon at the base. I don't have enough winter squash to fill this out, which is fine, but I do have some watermelon ready to come in the ground right now. So what I'm gonna do is uh, start planting those out and they can sprawl on the ground and keep weeds at bay um, and the ground cool for these sunflower plants. All right, so I've prepared this first row of uh, the beds for the sunflower, for the cut sunflower garden. And I'm gonna go ahead and put them in. I've got 29 plants here. Some of them didn't germinate, which is fine. And I'm gonna space them out about the width of this trowel, which is probably eight to 10 inches. So more than six inches, but I'm okay with that. And then I'm gonna space them about the same uh, width between the rows. So I'm gonna have two rows of these sunflowers. And this is a mixed bouquet, uh, a bouquet mix of sunflowers, which is appropriate since I'm doing the cut flower garden. If you're curious what I started them in, I started them in a smaller tray. It's like a one by one plug. I think there's 40 plugs in here. And since they're only gonna be in here two to three weeks, this is plenty of space for them to get going. And I mean, look how big they are after just a couple weeks growth. They're doing fine. So I definitely wouldn't wanna leave them in much longer than this. Um, and since the weather is perfect outside, I've just been hardening them off since they've um, since really since they germinated, I've been putting them outside to get used to the air. So they are ready to be in the bed. And when I go inside, I'm going to start another tray, except this time I might actually start two trays so that I'm planting four rows at a time instead of two rows. I'll have to do the math when I get inside and see um, how much space I have left and how many weeks I have left in the year. So maybe I'll put that in the description once I figure it out. But I am excited to give this a go. I love flowers. I've always loved flowers. I tend to focus more on the vegetables and fruit in my videos, but I, have for a long time, have been a perennial flower lover. And although sunflowers aren't perennials, they're definitely one of my favorites to plant every year. And if you haven't watched my video on the medicinal flower garden that I'm working on right now, that was my other project that I'm really excited to do this year is to really start getting more of those perennial flowers and perennial herbs going for a medicinal cottage garden. Um, so you can see that, I'll list it up above my head here. <laughs> 
Other flowers I'm growing um, in this fashion are zinnias. That's probably what I'm going to do this year. It's just zinnias and sunflowers. And then as I get my groove, I will probably add to that. But as far as just flowers I'm growing every week, um, I'm going to focus on zinnias and sunflowers. It has been a very productive Memorial Day for me. Yay! <laughs> we may not be at the lake, but we have completed so much work today. I got the beans in and the Three Sisters garden. I planted some more corn seed with my other winter squash. I got my first row of sunflowers for my cut sunflower or flower garden. And I got one, two, 13 watermelon plants put in the ground. I did not think I would get all of that done. Here's the watermelon bed here, which is on the other side of the Three Sisters Winter Squash Garden and the beginning of the Sunflower Garden. So I've got Black Diamond back here, Crimson Sweet in here, Orangelo, a Sun Melon somewhere, some Sugar Babies. So I spaced them out about five feet on five foot squares, just like I did the Winter Squash. They each have that space to sprawl out. And I plan on coming back in here and sowing sunflowers and zinnias in the open spaces so they'll grow tall and these watermelons will sprawl on the ground. As I've mentioned several times, a lot of this is experimenting, trying some new things for this year to prepare for next year when we really want to have a booth at the farmer's market. So I want to get these things kind of under my belt, practice them, see how they go. Some things may work, some may not. You know, sometimes you have a great vision in your head and when it actually works out in the garden it may not go as planned or it may actually go better than you've planned so we'll see i know the growth habits of these plants um, and we'll just see if my plan works out as i have it drawn it out in my head so i will clearly keep you updated on the watermelon bed on the succession planted sunflower and zinnia bed and the three sisters winter squash garden over here and i'm excited to see how the comparison of planting the corn seed directly in the ground compares to the seed that I grew indoors. So thanks so much for watching. I hope this video has been helpful and interesting to you. If so, please consider subscribing and sharing with your friends. And as always, my name is Landon Gilfillan with Pepper and Pine Garden Design, growing gardeners and their gardens, and I'll see you in the next video.